Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Risk-Related Concepts, Part 2. Today I'm going to be talking about qualitative versus quantitative risk assessments, and then I'm going to talk about some other risk calculation factors. There's a fair amount of ground to cover, so let's go ahead and begin this session. Let's begin by talking about qualitative versus quantitative risk assessments. Many businesses dedicate a fair amount of their resources, both in time and in money, to perform risk assessments. In most cases, these risk assessments may be broken into one of two main categories. They may be either qualitative or quantitative assessments. Qualitative assessments are conducted based on the probability or likelihood of the risk occurring and the expected impact on the business. This type of assessment is not really concerned about the actual dollar impact, just about the likelihood that it's going to occur. Quantitative assessments, on the other hand, are conducted based on the projected cost in dollars if a risk event occurs. Now let's go into a little bit more detail. The basic formula for a qualitative assessment is the risk is equal to the probability times the loss, or the likelihood times the impact. Now to create this assessment, several tables are built using the variables of the formulas. A risk table outlines the possible events, as in a data breach or hard drive failure. Then a probability or likelihood table outlines the possibility of the event occurring, as in not likely, likely, or most likely, with the value assigned to the likelihood. And then there's a loss or impact table. This outlines the impact to the business if the event occurs. Is the impact minor, medium, or major, with a value assigned to the loss? These tables are used collectively to create a qualitative risk assessment. When evaluating risks, quite often qualitative assessments are done first, and they're used to determine which assets and risks require a quantitative risk assessment. That's because quantitative risk assessments take more time, effort, and usually money. So let's talk about the quantitative assessment. It involves using the actual cost of a threat event to help determine how much to spend on preventative measures. You know, it doesn't make sense to spend more to prevent a risk from occurring than the risk is actually going to cost the business. Quantitative risk assessments can help when budgeting for a security solution to reduce the risk of occurrence. The first step is to determine the value of the asset. Now this value may be the cost to replace the asset or the cost of downtime. It all depends upon what risk you're evaluating. The second step is to determine the exposure factor. This is the cost of a threat event expressed as a percentage of the value of the asset. Step three is to determine the single loss expectancy or the SLE. The SLE is equal to the value of the asset as determined in step one times the exposure factor or EF as determined in step two. Once you have the SLE, then you go on to step four. Step four is to determine what the average rate of occurrence is. That's the number of times the threat event is estimated to occur each year. Once you have the average rate of occurrence, then you can determine step five, which is to find the average loss expectancy, or the ALE. The ALE is the SLE times the ARO, or the single loss expectancy times the average rate of occurrence. What this gives you is the dollar amount that your security solution should fall below. So that's step six. You need to determine which security solution that falls below the ALE will mitigate the risk of occurrence. With that done, let's move on to other risk calculation factors. Now these are factors that may come into play when determining some of the figures that are used in the quantitative risk assessment. First up, we have the MTTF, the mean time to fail. 
This is the average time a device is expected to be operational in production before it fails. This is usually reported by the manufacturer and it is a non-recoverable occurrence. That means when the MTTF hits, that asset is gone. Then there's the MTBF, the mean time between failures. This is the average time between failures of a system or device. Then we have the mean time to restore or recover, that's the MTTR. This is the average time required to restore or recover when a failure occurs. Then there's the RTO, which is the recovery time objective. This is the amount of allowable time a system or device can be down. And it can be measured in hours or minutes or even days. And finally, we have the RPO, the recovery point objective. This represents the portion of the system that is expected to be recovered after a failure. As in the RPO may be that it's expected that you will be able to recover everything from the point of the last full backup or maybe from the last incremental backup. That concludes this session on risk-related concepts part two. I talked about qualitative versus quantitative risk assessments and then I briefly discussed some other risk calculation factors. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I hope to do another one soon.